Thank you so much for staying tuned to Africa Discourse. I am Wilson Marshall. Today is all about banditry in Africa and of course the social, economic and political impact. Yeah, because you get to hear uh, about uh, some persons in Somalia. Yes, bandit. But somewhere along the line, they will not call terrorists. If you go to Mogadishu, if you go to uh, the desert around Libya, uh, you go to Kenya, Ethiopia, you get to hear about these bandits, rebels going up and down, uh, disrupting peaceful coexistence of citizens of African countries. You come down to Nigeria, move up north. Mm. You get to know what they are really doing. Destruction of lives and properties, kidnapping, killing, maiming, and Africa's like thinking. Is this a rejuvenation of what they've been experiencing in the past? Because right now it's like it's coming up again. All right. It was like, you know, taken down, reduced to the barest minimum all of a sudden. They are coming up. Even the waterways, yes, bandits are referred to as pirates on the waterways. You get to see them attacking, maiming, stealing, and all sorts of dastardly acts that are inimical to social, economic, and political development. With me here in the studio to talk about this, I have a, 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 a politician, an entrepreneur, a human rights activist. Join me to welcome Honorable Agarasi Idubo. Welcome to Africa Discourse. Thank you very much. Welcome. I appreciate your coming. We're here. I'm glad to be here. All right. Well, Nigeria, our country, and they are getting their fair share right now of banditry. If you go to the desert, uh, if you want to that, call it Agade, so some of that nature, you get to see bandits also uh, uh, fighting, stealing, maiming. Uh, and of course, if you go to the, the, the road between uh, Nigeria and of course Ghana, they call them robbers, but they are bandits. Somalia, just name it. I don't know. What do you think is making them to resurface in this continent? Have been reduced? So people are saying that they've not heard about them for a while now, but right now they are coming out again, rearing their ugly heads. What do you think led to this onslaught, so to speak, of bandits in African countries? Yeah, very honestly, the resurgence is as a result of system failure. When you have most, band, most bandit groups they come into existence to protest against a system of governance. So it's not a question of just people just getting together and saying they want, they want to become bad. They are, they are reacting to a situation, most times reacting to bad governance. And they get together and say, okay, fine, we'll pacify the system. And that's why they have, you know, in various parts of Africa now, where you have bandits, there is a response to the quality or failure of leadership. Mm -hmm. Those countries. Take Nigeria for instance. Boko Haram, yes, bandits, yes. There have been Christian terrorists, there have been Christian different kinds of you know names. Every day you hear that we have all oh, decimated the Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow you hear that Boko Haram has killed two other soldiers. So for me, it's a system failure where the bandits have, so to speak, overwhelmed government. And they, they continue in that stead. Some do so purely on commercial you know, basis to make money. Uh, when they see they are bandits, they harass people, you call them, you make money available, they go to share. But basically, most times you find bandits anywhere is a reaction to the quality of leadership in, that, in, in those countries. Mm. The reaction to the quality of leadership in that country. Now, some of the opinion that uh, these so-called bandits, they are the ones that inadvertently turn into a terrorist group. How true is this assertion? No, over time, no, over time. It's like 
some persons, the Nigerian situation, for instance, yeah. they, uh, so to speak, Boko Haram, they try to say that, you know, Haram means education. Boko means against education. Boko is against. Haram is education. So Boko Haram is against education. So if you clearly understood that position from the very beginning, and you did not understand what to do to them, to get them to understand your own thinking as a government, now they started in one small way, either because somebody had used them and jettisoned all of them. You pick a group of people, you use them to achieve an objective, and in the course of time, you put them aside. So the group decides to get together and fight back the system. So they believe that the only way to ask for justice is to get involved in banditry. And that's why most times, when they are fighting, they are fighting facelessly, and they believe that the cause is to ask for a pound of flesh from persons they believe have been unjust to them. So this is until, until that sort of injustice is righted, nobody will have peace. They keep saying there is a level of injustice which must be addressed. And most times, that injustice is never addressed. And to the extent that we don't address the injustice, there is this fight that will continue. They, they start as a very small, harmless group. They graduate to becoming a very terrible, vicious group. At times, you can have some bandits. Some bandits can be very, very peaceful. But most of them are very vicious. They are very, very deadly. And uh, they get to that stage when they discover that all they are, most times they are seeking for attention. And when they find out that they are not getting the kind of attention they require, they become more, more vicious. So these are the issues that sometimes. Uh, all right. Now, some of the people are that uh, are some bandits uh, are, are, are like uh, a group of freedom fighters that come together to fight against the ills of government. Some regard them to as uh, liberators. Uh, that school of thought. Uh, are you support of that school of thought? Sure, it is. I mean, some bandits are celebrated. Hmm. Some people believe in a community, for instance, when you find some of your colleagues that will rise up to fight on your behalf, they could, it, it could be an act of banditry. But those on whose behalf they are fighting will celebrate them eventually. And we have seen situations whereby bandits are celebrated in very many climes. They, look, ah, they hail you for being brave. They, some see bandits as an act of bravery. But they are very, very clear and surely. Bandits, they unleash mayhem. And the fact that they unleash mayhem, they cannot be said to be, by any means, friendly. I, I join the group of persons that think that they're terrorists because they terrorize an environment. I mean, we have lost close to, God knows how many now, in the, in the Northeast. Every day you hear 100, 200, 60, 50. I mean, this cannot be said to be friendly attacks. These are very deadly and malicious attacks. And for how long will they continue to attack? And for how long will they not be given attention? We hear at times they want to start to negotiate with them. But each time we hear they're negotiating with them, we hear another group come out and say, okay, fine, they are already unleashing other mayhem. We hear, okay, they have been you know, decimated. Okay, they have, they have uh, conquered Boko Haram. They have arrested or you know, whatever. And tomorrow you find another set of insurgents. So for me, until matters are addressed, you know, with some degree of conscientiousness, mm. so much and so long shall there be, you know, issue of banditry in Africa. Mm. All right, we want to go for a short break. When we return, we're going to be talking more about these bandits. Are they really freedom fighters, or are they terrorists just coming out to get their own pound of flesh? Whose flesh are they really after? We'll be right back. Do stay tuned. Advice to the public on the coronavirus. The World Health Organization, WHO, recommends you take the following measures. Know that most people who become infected experience mild illness and recover, but it can be more severe for others. Take care of your health and protect others by doing the following. Regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer or wash them with soap and water. Washing your hands with soap and water or using alcohol-based hand sanitizer kills virus 
viruses that may be on your hands. Maintain at least one meter, which is three feet distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Hands touch many surfaces and can pick up viruses. Once contaminated, hands can transfer the virus to your eyes, nose or mouth. From there, the virus can enter your body and can make you sick. Make sure you and the people around you follow good respiratory hygiene. This means covering your mouth and nose with your bent elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Then dispose of the tissue immediately. Stay home if you feel unwell. If you have a fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention and call in advance. Calling in advance will allow your healthcare provider to quickly direct you to the right health facility. If you develop fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical advice promptly as this may be due to a respiratory infection or other serious condition. Be informed. Be prepared. Be smart. Be safe. Be, Be ready, ready to, to fight, fight COVID-19. This message is brought to you courtesy independent television and radio. <laughs> we don't come again with our empowerment program. Do it yourself. <laughs> you don't tell where you they look for work and you not see no sit down look oh come register for this Ogbonga program we go put food for your table and even back bar make you employer of labor for this edition we go teach you how to make the following things gale time makeup hat bar soap toilet soap liquid soap detergent ice cream yogurt orange juice pineapple juice hair shampoo hair relaxer hair cream body cream petroleum jelly pottery snary fishery bakery and rearing of grass cutter the date for this Ogbonga show now 29th and 30th of August for 2020 will be Saturday and Sunday. The time now 8 o'clock for money. Venue now ITV Radio Corporate Office for Glasshouse Airport Road for Benin City. The training fees will call now 7,500 for one person. My people, Unado. Thank you so much for staying tuned. It's all about a banditry in Africa. Yeah, it's like a resurgence, the impact on social, economic, and political development. Joining us right now in the studio is a vibrant youth political analyst. Join me to welcome Salvation on an umbra. Hope I got that name correctly now. Thank you. Quite difficult, <laughs> but I cracked it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now, Honorable uh, uh, Agarisei Duban, I've been taking a look at this particular uh, issue. You talked about banditry in northern part of Nigeria. You talked about banditry also, the way it's been perceived by various persons in Africa as a continent. From your own point of view, what do you feel about the operation or the resurgence of banditry in Africa? Okay, for yeah. okay, all right. Um, we've got to look at banditry in Africa. Look at the history. It didn't really start. It's something that has evolved. It's uh, it's a communal clash. It actually started from regional clashes, but because it wasn't well handled, that evolved into what we're having now. The dragon-headed issue that we have now, and it's a serious threat. Uh, banditry is all about. We are talking of uh, people who illegally own arms and dispossess people of their properties. More of we are looking at um, dispossessing them of their cows and other things. And looking at it, uh, we are talking of over time, from the history, it began because it was not well handled. Now it has evolved. And they, are even, they have even gone into kidnapping. You now have bandits who now kidnap. And it's evolving day by day by day by day. If you look at it in Africa, it's a serious threat. It's a major security risk. And we're talking of a serious issue where lives are taken on a daily basis. On a daily basis, people are dying in Africa. Lands, we're having farmer header clashes, is, is, is just evolving. So generally, it's a serious risk that we've got to use a better approach to look into it. But we are in a serious risk. Because what you want to talk about, if you want to calculate how much has been lost, we're talking of billions of dollars lost to banditry. We are talking of our borders um, lives. We are talking of hundreds of thousands of lives lost to the activities of bandits in Africa generally. 
And so um, it has been an issue that has been there threatening our agricultural sector. Farmers are no longer wanting to go to the farm because it has generated to that. Because what happened is these Fulani headsmen that we are talking about that are armed, armed Fulani headsmen that we have right now, it started from somewhere. What actually happened was people, they didn't start up as criminals. Mm. They actually started as people who were normally rearing cattle. Then their cattle were being stolen. So in the bid to fight back, they started arming themselves. So when they armed themselves to fight back, gradually it became crime. Because you know, when somebody, at, you know, yesterday somebody came to steal my cattle. And I, in order for me to protect my cattle, I arm myself illegally. Mm. And so gradually, when you hold arms, your boldness begins to increase. Right. So before you know, it leads to you wanting to oppress okay. farmers and all that. So it's something that has constantly evolved. The new phases that we see, it's evolving day by day. Okay. And the truth is that right now, if it is not well handled, it's evolving more and more. I have an encounter with a Fulani head man uh, that uh, kidnapped somebody. Uh, I was involved in between that issue for the release of the person. I was involved in the cause. And you could hear a Fulani young man telling you that you think I'm a small boy, you want to give me 500,000? As I'm talking to you, I have over 10 million in my account. And you are telling me with 500,000. Okay, your own testimony about the, uh, the, the armed Fulani yes, because I believe yes. we have some decent Fulani heads. Of course, we are talking about okay. the, the ones that are illegally uh, armed. All right, they all are right. decent ones. Okay, I, I will come back to you. Now, Honorable, you're trying to give an example of uh, the bandit in Somalia, how they came into being. Yeah, like I said, I mean, like he said, they evolved. Yeah. The Somalian bandits were protesting against the system. There were some traditional persons who they believed were oppressing them. And to fight that institution, some set of young persons came together to say, we must fight this process. Mm. And they came together and became what we now say, what we now call bandits. Banditry takes a country, a nation, a continent backwards. Because the kind of things that you lose by the activities of bandits is such that you can't even quantify. People are so scared of bringing their natural things because the fear of attacks in various forms. Like he, like he mentioned, when we have persons who are scared of another person, by virtue of the fact he carries a weapon which you consider mm -hmm. superior to your weapon, maybe you have a cutlass, somebody carries a gun, of course he is carrying a superior weapon to yours. And you find out that until we check all of this, like I said before, it's, it's a protest against the system. It's a system failure. He said, governance has failed to an extent of not being able to check these activities of these bandits. And I, for me, I, if, 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 they, if you defeat a government, if a group of people who have chosen to unleash mayhem on citizens can defeat a government, then uh, I feel so strongly that that kind of government is not worthy of... Uh, to be called a government because mm -hmm. every day we hear about Boko Haram. Boko Haram has been there for over 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And every, every day we hear, okay, that will be, be dissipated. And government has not been able to say to us mm -hmm. that with all the might that we have, different security chiefs, there is still the effect of Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. Every day they attack a group of people and we say we have security chiefs. So for me, I think something must be done and done quickly. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they will overrun they will overrun these people one day and this country will just be, I, I don't know if naked now, but uh -huh. I just believe that what needs to be done is that, like he, he talked about, that they, they, they evolved yeah. over, time. over time. That is, they started. Mm -hmm. And nobody, nobody checked them. Mm -hmm. If they checkmated, maybe they wouldn't have got into this level. Mm -hmm. Now they have even got into a situation where they even call them terrorists. Mm -hmm. They are even serious threats to development. So for me, I think we, all we need to do now is get ourselves together and believe that Government must rise up. Government has various forms, various countries. Even in of Africa, for instance, you mentioned Lagades. In Lagades, for instance, up to tomorrow, the Lagades situation is that you have even young, young persons who enlist themselves as mm. terrorists because they, they find that they, they think that they have reached the zenith of their, of their movement, the movement and now they want to unleash mayhem. Mm. They now get themselves enlisted into a group. And for me, the Agadez situation is not even a group talk because Agadez is a very important part of Libya. All right. So okay. these are issues that we must, we must, we must, we must not allow okay. these bandits to overrun us. Okay. All right. Now, some uh, government in Africa, 
Uh, in order to, like, you know, appease or stop this banditry, choose to, like, put them or get them involved in governance. Do you think this will really cut banditry? Bring them together. If you take a look at the Hezbollah case, though they are uh, uh, you know, categorized as terrorists, they all started as bandits coming together due to the pressure and the mayhem they are committing in that era or in that uh, country. They choose to bring them into the government. Do you think that will work in Africa, in that system? Because a, a governor in Nigeria he said he's not ashamed to even negotiate with these bandits if he's yes. going to bring about peace. Well, uh, there is a reason America has a standard. The standard of America says we don't negotiate with terrorists. Mm. The reason is this. When you start negotiating with a terror group, mm. the government is showing weakness. You are, what you are trying to say is, since we couldn't defeat you, let's negotiate. Mm. If two nations are negotiating, I understand. But if a government is negotiating with some riffraffs from the nation who picked up arms illegally, but that is why you see that, for example, Nigeria negotiated with men. And I was started talking of negotiating with Boko Haram. When you negotiate with terror groups, what happens is that another terror group that is preparing is emboldened. They are told that crime pays. That if you are so good at committing your crime, and if you are not caught, the government is going to come back and pay you for your crime. For example, I am wondering the, how you can tell me that a man who has killed, probably through banditry, he has killed, maimed, raped women, he has killed over 12 people, he sits down with a government, being negotiated, they tell you to be part of the government, and then you put another man who stole a phone in jail for 12 years. I mean, it, that system is already imbalanced. What you are trying to tell the man who stole a phone that you put inside prison for 12 years, you are telling him your crime is too small, that's why you're in jail. If you want to be free, do big crime. There is no way. You, you see, the, the idea alone of negotiating with these people is a, it's like what is a system failure. Mm. When the government, and I want, there's something we must take note of in Africa. This thing called weapon, this thing called guns. We must be very careful because when guns, you see, how do these things happen? Like we're in a political time now in a those state. Sometimes when politicians arm, when youths are armed, mm. Be, during election time to snatch ballot buses and all that. The problem we used to have is after the election, in various nations in Africa, those things are not taken back. These boys hide these things. And this is what they use to terrorize us back again. All right. So where the government should come in, it's not negotiating with bandits. Mm -hmm. For example, the weapons that Bokwa, the weapons that these bandits mm -hmm. use, where do they come from? Okay. They are passing through our borders. Mm -hmm. So we go back to our security system. If we negotiate with one or we get them involved with governance, another one will come. Another one will come. That's why we, we deal with one. We show strength. Okay. And then we, we put fear in the hearts of others that are not seeing such an idea. Okay, now I, I'm going to ask you the same question because apart from the Hezbollah group, the Taliban in Afghanistan, they were incorporated into governance. And now these were termed as terrorists and of course bandits. Do you see it working in some parts of Africa? That's the method bringing them into governance. I, I think I agree with him. Hmm. I agree with him to the extent that you cannot negotiate with a man that is making you look that is making you look stupid. Mm. I mean, if if the Boko Haram people have terrorized government for 15, 20 years, and government cannot use any might to wipe them off, I mean, it's a system failure. Mm. America will not negotiate with you know a, a group like that. America believes that you know once you sh you want to show that you have strength, then let us put exercise strength. Let us, see, let us now find out who has a superior power. So if you want to negotiate with a terrorist group, then you are going to start to breed more terrorist groups. Because they now find out, okay, fine, you have now negotiated with Agarese Idubo, then we say will now come and hide on that one thing and create another problem, believing that we'll come and negotiate with Wilson. Then we'll not, so these are issues, we must be able to fight and fight and fight. You know, you must detroy your enemy. You must dethrone your enemy. Mm. If you don't dethrone your enemy you, and you are talking to your enemy and you are begging your enemy, it will, it will, it will just finish you. Mm. So you must fight your enemy and crush your enemy. So these are issues. I don't think we should negotiate with terrorists. Mm. I don't think so. Okay. Once a man is a terrorist, you know, he's a bandit, mm. for God's sake, 
do what you can do to teach other who lessons okay. by dealing with decisively with such persons. All right, all right, now, gentlemen, I'm getting signal that our time is up. You're going to use 45 seconds each to summarize your point. Salvation, please, 45 seconds. Um, I, I want to say to our politicians mm -hmm. and Nigerians and mm -hmm. Africans generally, we need to love our nation. We cannot keep these people are getting bolder. You need to in Delta State, people pay heads headsmen now before they go to farm. Mm -hmm. It has gotten their Reddit on Vanguard. You pay mm -hmm. headsmen. We've got to if we don't take if we don't handle this now, it will it will get worse. Mm -hmm. We oh must gosh. take decisive action, action now. now. Decisive. Thank you so so much, salvation. Decisive. Honorable, forty five seconds. Let government do right. Mm -hmm. Let government just do right. Mm -hmm. What is wrong is system failure and let's let government just understand how to be sincere to the generality of the populace. So at the end of the day, do what is right, govern with the fear of God to the extent that your, those who are governing will trust you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate the wonderful analysis. You've heard them. Banditry in Africa, impact of social, economic, and political development. It is going to be a continuum. Let's keep observing to see how the government of the day will crush these bandits so that there will be peace, lasting peace in Africa as a continent. See you tomorrow on International Forum. God willing, bye for now.